All right, JP, let's talk about the, uh, about the possibilities for Helton and the possibilities. Of, uh, Sheffield's another one. Uh, and a, This is last year on the ballot. You obviously have Wagner there and Andrew Jones. They all going to get in. What's your take? Let me hear. Chris, good afternoon. One of my favorite topics all year long is the Baseball Hall of Fame. It's a great day for all of us who love the game. I do believe Helton gets in this year. He was oh so close a year ago. He almost joined Scott Rowland and Fred McGriff on the dais in Cooperstown this past summer. I believe he will get there in the summer of 2024. The, the numbers, the production, once Larry Walker got in, Chris, I think there was an understanding that it makes no sense for the writers to hold Coors Field against any of the great hitters who have played for the Colorado Rockies. And you look at Todd's career, he produced at home and on the road, he belongs. You mentioned Adrian Beltre, probably the easiest check on my entire ballot when it arrives here to my home will be that one beside Adrian Beltre's name. He's got the most hits of anybody on the ballot this year, one of the best offensive and defensive third baseman ever. So I think we'll have a class of at least two and then we'll see if Wagner gets enough support. I am I am a Wagner guy. I think he was one of the most dominant relievers of his time. I know we may have a difference of opinion on that, Chris, but I think in general, a Wagner's case seems to be getting stronger over time. Well, the problem with Wagner is he was bad in the playoffs. That's the problem with Wagner. And, you know, with relievers, if you're bad in postseason play, it's a problem. Go ask the Met fan in the Cardinals scenario. Uh, if, when he was with uh, Houston, they didn't go to him. They left a, a lot of the starters in when he's with the Astros. He's not great in closing scenarios in the postseason. And, my, listen, you're right about Houghton is going to make it. He's a 284 lifetime hitter outside of Coors Field. And his numbers outside of that ballpark for a first baseman or pedestrian. Now, you're going to tell me that Coors Field, you can't worry about it, that it's part of the major leagues, so you deal with it? Okay, if that's your argument. But he's not nearly the same player offensively out of that environment. I mean, the numbers indicate that in all categories. That is the problem I have with him. I understand overall he's a Hall of Famer. Let me hear your take there. Go ahead. Right. Well, I think, Chris, if you spoke with our colleague Dan O'Dowd about this and, and all the, the teams that Dan built there over time, he would tell you that the adjustment that players go through when they leave and come back on their body is extraordinarily taxing. And I think that is really crucial context to keep in mind here that, yes, did Todd Helton with that swing benefit from the big gaps? Of course he did. And the way the ball travels there, yes. But also he learned how to take advantage of, of his home field and tailor his approach to that check out how infrequently overall that he struck out certainly by the standards of the modern slugger and i think a lot of today's hitters would do very well to take a page out of todd helton's playbook yeah, hundred percent. I you I could argue I, I wouldn't put him in, but who am I? I don't have a vote, so it doesn't make any difference. This is just but this is sports we're talking about. This is not life and death. They don't like it tough. Uh the couple of scenarios that are interesting, and I go with the argument if you gotta think about it. They're not Hall of Famers. That's the argument I go with because a Hall of Famer is a guy, you know, that's a that's a Hall of Famer. And obviously Beltre, ah, ah, that's a Hall of Famer. With Utley, Andrew Jones, I gotta think about. And if I have to think about it, then I go the fact that they're the whole of the very good instead of the whole of the great. What's your argument with that? Let me hear. So, Chris, in general, I am a big hall guy. I, I filled up my ballot this past year with 10 votes. And honestly, Chris, I do it for a couple of reasons. Number one. I like the idea of honoring the players the best of their era. I think that it that it renews a passion among fans for the history of our game when we have a number of people up on the dais in the summertime in Cooperstown and we re reflect and we go back there and learn about the paths and the unique stories of these players. There was certainly a robust debate about Roland. I was always a big Roland guy. I believe that what's, what Scott did in his career was very representative and it really elevated the sport. And Utley, in a lot of ways, has a similar trajectory to Scott Rowland. Of course, both have some connections there to the Philadelphia Phillies. I think with Utley, it's the question I would say is, did he play enough games? Did he stay healthy enough to get there? I think the answer is yes. And I think that if you put Utley in, it really boosts the candidacy of his teammate, Jimmy Rollins, because Rollins played in even more games and he was even more dependable from that perspective. So I think Utley, he, now we talk about postseason. 
for for his case, the playoffs elevate his candidacy. What he did for the playoffs in in 08 and 09, certainly he contributed to the Dodgers later on in his career. I've always been a big believer in what Chase Utley brought to a team on and off the field. The other guy that we talk about in the context of games played, I'm sure we'll probably go there too, is Joe Maurer. Joe Maurer, much like Utley, missed time due to injury, but you look at Joe Maurer's peak. You win the batting title as a catcher and how unique of a skill set that is. Chris, I am a believer that the truly unique talents in our game need to belong in Cooperstown. You look at Tim Raines, what he did for the stolen base. Joe Maurer as a left-handed hitting catcher winning batting titles was special. And I think that's where I, I will take a very strong look at Joe Maurer and believe that he, much like Buster Posey after him, it's often difficult to capture the full meaning of a catcher. And when you're winning batting titles at that position, I do believe you belong in Cooperstown. Yeah, he only played 920 games as a catcher, 600 games as a first baseman, and then another 300 games as a DH. So he's a catcher half of his career. Uh, but I understand he won three batting championships. He's got a lifetime 306 batting average. Uh, it's tricky. And for a period of time, he was a great player and a Hall of Famer. I mean, there's a period of time like Utley. Utley had five Hall of Fame years. That's it. Five. Is that enough to put you in Cooperstown? In my eyes, it wouldn't be because I'm a small room guy. Hall of Fame is about the small room. It's not about the big room. That's a school, two schools of thought there. Uh, it depends where you lie. It doesn't make you a bad person if you're small or big. You were big, I'm a small. We go from there. Good job, John.